Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Up Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industries. You are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a a podcaster show. Then at the end, we will identify one powerful how, one action that she can take for results in the next 30 days. So let's welcome Katie Brinkley, host of the podcast, Rocky Mountain Marketing. Katie, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Hey, yeah, you are welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, Katie's podcast, Rocky Mountain Marketing, has released 69 episodes from April 8th of 2020 until the day of this recording, which is July 29th of 2021. Katie started her career as a sports reporter in Denver at the radio station 850 KOA. She was passionate about football And, um, as she was growing up, she rarely heard women on the radio talking about football. So she wanted to change that. And now you have, you are with a marketing agency. Is that right, Katie? I have my own marketing agency. So I started my own marketing company after I was laid off from what I thought was my dream job. And, um, now I've found my own dream job with running my own social media agency. Okay. So you have a uh, next step social communications. Is that correct? So that's the correct. name of your company. And then your podcast is called Rocky mountain marketing. Is that right? Correct. And you're yeah. in Fort, Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm in Denver, Colorado. Denver. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I was, I was trying to follow the trail and, you know, um, yeah, that's awesome. Well, cool. So why did you start your podcast, Rocky mountain marketing podcast? Well, you know, it's funny because I actually just did a social media post about this uh, recently and it was, it made me think back to, man, it feels like I've had this podcast forever, but it's because I'd been wanting to do a podcast forever. And before the, the pandemic of 2020 happened, I had, was at social media marketing world, talking with a bunch of other marketers hearing these different marketers say that, Oh, I have this podcast. I'm like, Oh gosh, you guys have a podcast. That's so cool. I want one. And I just had been wanting to get into podcasting because I come from radio and I thought, Oh, it'd be so cool to be able to kind of get back on the mic again and have that kind of social audio presence. And I just didn't know how to get started. And so when the pandemic happened and everything got shut down back in March of 2020, I've given the gift of time, like many other business owners. And I said, well, what better time than now? And the rest is history. That is so great. Well, um, and real quick too, I wanted to touch on the fact you mentioned that you have a second podcast as well. And I wanted to say, I haven't even, this is brand new news to me. So what is the other show that you have going right now? So I have Rocky Mountain Marketing, which is business and marketing, uh, podcast. And then I have across the pond NFL podcast. And that is obviously it's a passion project. As you said earlier, I got started in sports radio at 850 KOA and I was the locker room reporter for the Broncos and then the Rockies and and the avalanche. So I was used to being in the sports world. That's what I wanted to do. And so an opportunity came up. Um, I was on Facebook. I was in a podcast group on Facebook and someone said something about looking for a, uh, a guest host on their podcast that they were just getting started. It was going to, to talk NFL. And I was like, Ooh, well, if you're looking for a female voice, cause there was all these dudes commenting like, yeah, yeah, I'm a huge, you know, go giants. And, and all these guys were coming. Like, well, if you're interested in the female voice, I would love the opportunity. And he said, Oh, wow. I didn't think I'd get this much you know, response, if you guys want to shoot me a DM and tell me what you listen to the episode and tell my last episode, tell me what you think. And so I did. And I responded to him. He's like, yeah, why don't you go ahead and come on? And before we knew it, um, now I'm his regular co-host and we do two episodes a week during football season together. And he's in Scotland and I'm here in Colorado. And from our podcast, he's now launched an entire sports podcast network. So he has an NHL podcast, an NBA, WNBA, MLB, and it's the same format for all of the shows. So one host in America and one host across the pond, and we oh. talk, they talk uh, American sports. So I'm on the football side of things, and I absolutely love it. As you can tell, it's, it's, I'm still very passionate about football, even though uh, I'm not on the sidelines anymore. It's still fun to talk NFL on, on air. 
Oh, I love that. That is so awesome. That's so exciting. So now back to your uh, marketing, your business podcast. First of all, I love it. I did listen to a couple episodes. I really like that it's local. You know, you're not afraid just to say like, these are for my people, you know, small business. And which is great because as you know, again, like I'm talking to a pro here, knowing your audience, being really clear about who you're talking to, what they're going to get out of it. It's just you know, it really sets apart a great show, I believe. So why, what is it that you want to get out of your show when you started it? What do you, I mean, I know you want it, you know, you've always wanted to start a podcast, but like, what is it that you wanted to get out of it? Well, so there's, there's a couple things with it. And I think that that's where it, I kind of was going back and forth as to what is the whole goal of the podcast. And when I started it, it was, I wanted to one, have the opportunity to talk about social media because I am very passionate about it, but I selfishly, I wanted to hear other business owners journeys and how they got to where they are. Because I, as I said before, I never expected to be an entrepreneur. I mean, I either one was going to be a sports reporter on radio um, or B, I was going to be a marketing manager for the television station. I loved both those jobs. Both of those were corporate jobs. And then when I was laid off from my, my, my corporate job, the marketing manager position, um, there was a restructuring, you know, when two big companies may merge because that titles just get eliminated. And so I was one of them and I was devastated and I, I didn't know what my next step would be. And if it wasn't for other business owners, really just giving me the gift of their time and sharing their entrepreneur journey and sharing the tips like, oh yeah, well, you need to make sure that you do um, you know, you, you hire this person to do your taxes, or you need to make sure that you do an, uh, an LLC for this reason. I mean, like all that was like a foreign language to me. And if it wasn't for people just giving me the gift of their time, I wouldn't be able to have started the company that I started. And so that's kind of where I was like, I would love to just continue hearing these stories as to why you decided to go into entrepreneurship and to kind of create this community of other Denver business owners sharing their journeys, sharing the marketing that's worked for them in, you know, in their business, because you never know what someone's done, where it's like, I never even thought about that, that hopefully it could be that light bulb moment. So I kind of wanted to create this, this Colorado based business owner community where we could share tips and share our journeys and, and work with each other instead of trying to outsource somebody, um, you know, overseas or, or out of state, you could just go right down the street and, and buy a cup of coffee from them or, or use that person's brokerage for your, for your next home sale. So it was just kind of trying to build a bigger community here in Colorado about business. I love it. Well, and it's almost like part mastermind and part network community where you're really kind of knitting each other together, but yet attracting the kind of people that you want to hang out with. Um, so I think that that's really great. Um, and so now what, who is it that, I mean, it, you're again, I love that you're a pro. So a lot of times I'll do these hot seats and I'm like, oh, you know, lately I've been interviewing a lot of people with a lot of shows. So this is, I've been spoiled, but you know, sometimes I'll interview somebody who's brand new. And so it's like, we have to go from point a, which is like, Hey, like, who's your audience? I don't know. You know? And, and whereas you're like already, you've done so much of the groundwork already. And so what we'll be doing, I envision is really identifying the things that are working. And like we talked about before we started recording, just figuring out like, how can you tweak them even just a little bit and get even more out of it, but I do love what you're doing. So some of these questions I keep bumping into, I'm like, you've, you've got this going on. For example, target audience, Denver based small businesses. Have you identified any additional, have you drilled it down any further than that? Or would you say that that's spot on? I say that that's spot on. I mean, it's, I think it's hard because, you know, I'd like my podcast to, to grow, but at the same time, it's so targeted because I've tried to kind of create this this tight knit community of other people that want to listen and do business together. And so I've tried to kind of grow a little bit from just the Denver based business owners in, for season two. So season one was all Denver based business owners sharing their journey and sharing the marketing tips. And then season two, I've, I've been alternating Denver based business owners with um, digital marketing experts from around the world. Um, mm -hmm. So I've had someone from New Zealand come on. I've had 
uh, you know, somebody from Boston, somebody, you know, so I've been trying to get these different experts that typically you would only be able to hear speak if you went to a conference or an event and bought a ticket. Mm. And so try to kind of bring in that next level of marketing tips for the listeners so that they can hear, hear the stories and hear the, the Denver based business journey, but then also hear the marketing strategies that are really going to help them elevate their business. I think that's a great idea. And as I'm listening, I just keep thinking your, your format and your, how you're doing this is so much like the first podcast I had, which was, you know, again, I would ask people to be on my show and they're like, what's a podcast. Nobody knew what one was. And that was only, I think it was like four years ago by now. So it wasn't even, it's not like, I'm not one of those, like, Oh, it's been 10 years. Uh, but here in, in Billings, Montana, (laughs) like they were still, you know, using AOL and stuff. So, um, and now I would say that we're like cutting edge technology everywhere pretty consistently. But at the time it was just like, I have this great idea, but it was similar to what you're talking about where I was interviewing local businesses and then also marketing pros. And my number one thing was I wanted to meet local people because I was new to the area. And so I wanted to connect with other like-minded people who also wanted to do excellent things. So I, as I'm hearing you talk, it just keeps bringing back those awesome memories. I love what you're doing. So that's awesome. So (laughs) what, so what would you say is the problem that you're solving for your audience? Um, well, I guess I don't know. Um, I, I, this is a good question because I selfishly, like I wanted to hear other people's journeys so that I could learn from their mistakes and I could just kind of cut straight to the front of the line. So I would like my listeners to get that too, but then also just to, to love, to learn that there's, there's different ways to, to do online marketing for your small business so that you, you can grow. It doesn't, you might not, you might think, oh, you know, well, this is, believe it or not, one of the most common things I hear is that social media does not work for me and my business. That is a common thing that I hear. And it makes me really sad because they're, they've gone in without a strategy. And so that's one of the things where I'm like, I just would love for as many people to hear, like you can be successful online when you have a strategy involved and it doesn't require hundreds of thousands of dollars, it doesn't require, you know, hundreds of hours a week to do, but when you do it smart, you, you can succeed. And so that's kind of what the goal is for me, I guess, is to, to learn from other people's mistakes, but then also learn the strategies that will help you elevate your business so that you're focusing in on your business and not what to post on Facebook today um, or, or how to start an email list or anything like that. Right. So would you say that if you were to, so on one hand, you want to help business owners avoid mistakes that other business owners ahead of them have already made. So there's kind of, they're starting further ahead than they would have if they were just stumbling in themselves and trying to figure it all out, but then also helping business owners develop a strategy, have a, have a shorter line between them and a social media strategy that is doable even for a small business. So you kind of have two things that you're trying to accomplish. Would you say, am I hearing you correctly? Yes, that is exactly what I'm, that's exactly it. And I think that's where I've kind of been, I want to make sure that I keep the idea of the podcast like there so that they know, like every time they tune in, they're going to get, they're going to get that answer. But at the same time, I feel like, well, maybe, maybe that isn't a clear goal when I was saying it to you. I was like, well, maybe that's not clear. (laughs) Yeah. And that's part of, that's always one of, it's always the first thing I'm looking for is the audience promise. And because you think about it as leaders, especially as thought leaders, we're kind of, you know, we've got our flag and we're marching on ahead and uh, they want to know that we know where we're going. Like what's, what is it that if I listen to your show over time, what can I rely on knowing that I'm going to get so that I'm spending that time? Well, you know, all of us being so busy. So it feels like you've got it. It's just a matter of clarity as i um, consistently, but you know, again, um, even looking at your topics, it, it all points to that true North. So, um, you know, again, it, it's like, you're doing it great, but, um, I could see, yeah, some possibilities there. So what do you do now to evaluate whether your content is resonating? Um, and have you made adjustments in the past based on what you're finding? 
Well, that's part of a season two. I started alternating with the digital marketing experts because I did find that those were some of the most listened to episodes was when I was just talking high level strategy with somebody else in the industry. And I, and, and then also the solo episodes where I'm just talking to myself about strategy, but as much as I, and this is one of the things that I think I need to, to kind of get over. Um, I don't like hearing me just ramble on for 30 minutes. I, I enjoy the conversation side and, and having that, that feel like with this here, you know, it's, it's a conversation and you can see what the other person's saying and you can, you know, have a conversation go down a completely different direction than you thought it might. And when you have somebody else on the other end, that that's possible. And so I like those high level kind of strategy conversations and that's where I was getting the most downloads. And so that's why I was like, okay, well, I can't just eliminate all of my Denver based business owners, because that's what I started the podcast on, like was to, to create that community. Any, otherwise I'll just be any other marketing podcast. Um, if I just start talking high level strategies. And so that's where I, I kind of also decided to make the decision for season two to alternate guests, um, from Denver based business owners and, and digital marketing experts. I like, okay. So I love that. I love what you're doing. So you would say when, so of this, if you were to pitch your, cause you do have solo episodes that you do right now. I have a few, I only have, I think four or five, which is not a lot for the 69 episodes that have been released so far. Yeah. So what would you say gets the most listens? Is it the high level marketing conversations, the local guests or the solo? Um, it really, I have to say, it depends on who my guest is. Um, because, you know, I create graphics for them and, and send out an email and give them the links. And if they do the promotion, um, then that helps change the, the amount of listeners. But if it's just me promoting, then it, the episodes that have just the digital marketing experts on tend to get the most listens, probably because most of my followers on social media are interested in digital marketing. So also when people are looking for their names, like the more popular someone is just in general, so, you know, like I did a I did an interview with Neil Patel and I promise people are looking up Neil Patel sometimes and then boom, your podcast is right there. So you get a lot more exposure for sure. If someone's looking, cause the rest of us, like who looks up our name. Right. <laughs> and so, um, so it's always nice when you have a name that people are looking up. So I think that that's, that's really good. Um, and then also let's see. So how do you measure, do you just measure like the downloads? Is that what kind of your baseline as far as like, who's listening, who's not? Yeah. The, I'm, I'm just going off of downloads. Yeah. And then on social media, I'm sure that you're all across social media. Um, that kind of leads us. We've just talked about the, the why, like why you do it, who it is that you're talking to. And I'm just was just bolting ahead to the what. Um, so I know, I'm sure you've got a great social media strategy. And um, with that, I mean, are you measuring like how much engagement you're getting or how much that's growing as well and taking that into consideration as far as content that is really resonating with people? Or how do you, how do, you do that exactly? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I, ha- I'm, I'm- believe it or not, I'm on social media. Um, and I have a, a, <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah. I have a pretty strong strategy around um, Instagram and LinkedIn for my social media. I also have a Facebook, but um, I don't use it as much. I have more traction on LinkedIn and on Instagram. And so uh, what I do is I, I share it to those networks. Uh, LinkedIn's great because if, when I tag my guests, then they get notified, their followers get notified. So if they're active on LinkedIn too. Um, and then on Instagram, I have a couple different strategies that I use where I go live in stories. I have carousel posts with audiograms and um, I've tried different, you know, I, I was just using like the podcast cover art for a while, but then I have so many episodes coming out. My feed was just starting <laughs> to look like all podcasts. And so that's where I kind of changed up by having those carousel posts. So that way it still looks different in the feed, but when somebody sees it, they're like, Oh, this is a new episode. So that it's still familiar enough that they, they know that this is in regards to the podcast and not just about a social media statistic or something. Yeah, exactly. So do you have a, um, like, is, is your podcast brand like, does it interchange with your 
uh, company brand or do you use your company yeah. brand and tag or hashtag your uh, podcast? How do you work that out? Um, so it's all the same branding. It's all like same brand color, same fonts and everything. Um, it's just a different, obviously a different title. Um, and I created my own like podcast cover art and everything for it, but it's all, it's all branded the same. Okay. Awesome. And then, so I, I know I get so nitpicky here. I'm always looking at how everything connects together, but so if I were to go to your social media, is your social media under your company name or it is under me. So under you. My, oh, okay. Yeah. So, you- so my, my Instagram is I am Katie Brinkley. And then on LinkedIn, I'm at Katie Brinkley. I do have a company page at next step social communications on LinkedIn also, but, uh, I don't have any podcast, uh, social media handles. Everything's under either my business or, or my name. I love that. You know, it's so funny. Cause talk, I would, I would say I like, I've been doing social media forever, but I always love talking to someone who like, that's your jam. That's what you're studying every day. That's what you're doing. You're in it. Uh, I'm more of a, like, yes, I do social media. I've been doing it forever. It changes every five seconds. So it's always nice. And I have to say, I'm so happy to hear that you do that because that that's what I tell. Like, I agree. I just feel like you need to have one brand. You're one person. Don't confuse everybody, but it's okay to have a show that has a different name. The other thing I have to say, like, I love that your um, that your next step uh, it's next step, social communications. I'm next up nation and every, <laughs> every transcription always says next step. So I feel like we're next step nation, but we're not, we're next up nation, but I, I feel kindred spirits here there for a minute with the, with my other name. It's kind of like, you know, when I was in school and people would say Jeff and I would, we would both look, you know? <laughs> so, so that's us. That's awesome. Um, so Uh, let's see here. And I know, and again, like I said, I've kind of followed the steps through to find the different pieces. Um, now I'm, I'm just going to, I, and I'm just, this is so different than my normal podcast. Usually I'm all like, Oh, so tell me your story. This is just really like, okay, I'm going to dig in now. So I'm just going to just ask away. Um, do you, is your host Spreaker? Is that correct? It is. Okay. Um, which is funny because like their player looks almost exactly like Libsyn. So I went to your website, uh, Next Step Social Communications and clicked podcast. And I swear, I was like, I thought it said Spreaker. And so do the ads run through Spreaker? They do. Yeah. So you can ch- choose where the ads are placed. Um, obviously, it has to be like, uh, yeah, so you can choose where the ads are placed, but I don't have to do anything for, you know, the ads that they, they do all the work. And then they also give you the option to do your own ad to play on similar podcasts for free. So I created my own ad, um, which they are playing on other marketing podcasts, I guess, to get them, uh, those listeners to, to listen to my show. Okay. And so with that, and I apologize, I don't know a ton about Spreaker, but I, so they place the ads. So for example, when I listen to your show, it's uh, MailChimp, like MailChimp in the beginning, MailChimp in the middle and MailChimp at the end. Hmm. Like, do they place the company into your podcast? Is that true? Yeah. And it's interesting that you got MailChimp because I mean, I don't know which episode you listened to, but I know that, um, for me, I've never heard MailChimp when I've listened to my own <laughs> episodes. I've heard, um, what is it called? Uh, those Plato's Closet. I don't know if you have those in Montana, <laughs> but it's like a, a higher end consignment store. And there's one over like, you know, two miles away. But I'm like, man, I wonder, that's so interesting that I'm hearing Plato's Closet in the middle of my podcast. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Well, we probably, they're like, we don't have any stores of any of our advertisers anywhere near Billings, Montana. So we're just going to play MailChimp. So that must be it. Yeah. This is is so fascinating to me. So, so that's awesome. I've been pretty happy with Spreaker. Um, You know, I, I, I'm, I'm on Clubhouse a lot and I join a lot of podcast rooms. So I've had the opportunity to, to be in the the same uh, room and share a stage with the founder of Lisbon and, you know, a number of these other, you know, podcast hosting platforms and everyone that I've talked to is, um, you know, they like, have not heard very much about Spreaker, but when I tell them, you know, like, oh, well, this is what it costs. This is what I get. They say, yeah, I wouldn't leave then. So 
<laughs> that's cool. No, that's great. Well, and I think too, a lot of times we put so much into the, uh, into the platform, like, I, I, like you, I'm always in these podcast groups and things like that. And the question always comes up about hosting service, you know, where should I be hosted? Where should I be hosted? And while I have my own personal opinions, I just don't think that that's a deal breaker. Like just go where it makes the most sense to you. And, um, you know, for me, I, I just like a lot of control over my SEO. I'm a total SEO geek. And so, um, so I'm super happy, you know, with some over the other speaker, I don't even know enough about to even, I, I, but I've tested a lot and, that's always my first thing is like, how much control do I have over the SEO portion of things? So, um, but with Spreaker, so do you get a piece of the pie or does the ads, do the ads help offset your costs? So uh, you do get a piece of the, the pie. Um, like they have a monetization feature where they'll, it'll pay you out every time that you reach $10 or something. And um, it'll just go into your PayPal account. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. And then also, so now your branding strategy is, um, it like you're branding yourself, would you say, or like, what is it that you're trying? What, you know, cause usually is there a, what am I trying to ask? Is there a, uh, like a building authority type piece to your desire for getting a bigger audience for your desire of having a podcast? Is that part of your, what you want to get out of the show? When I started, it was just to, to get back into, you know, into radio, really, it was just to get back behind the microphone, because I thought it would be fun, and to hear other people's stories. And now it's transitioned more into hearing their stories, but I do want to establish myself as an authority so that I, you know, I can continue speaking uh, on other people's shows and get more opportunities to speak because um, the more people that carry your voice, the more people want to do business with you. So it has turned into me wanting to have more of that authority piece. Um, I know that probably means me doing more solo episodes than uh, doing the, the, uh, the guest episodes. Um, but yeah, again, that's, that's why I guess where one of my biggest hurdles is, is because I just like talking to other people and, and hearing from them as opposed to just hearing myself talk for 20 minutes. Well, I, I give you permission that you never have to do a solo episode if you don't want to. I know uh, a lot of people do. I've seen it done really successfully where, uh, in fact, one of my former mentors, he is huge in mar in the marketing space and he has a weekly interview show. I mean, he has a show, but he weekly he interviews and then daily he's got like a quick 10 minute boom, this is what you do. And, you know, I've seen other podcasters will, the, where they will do the solo episode, you know, once a week, right after, or right before their interview episode for myself, like I, I really, I'm with you. If, if it weren't for the relationships, I would probably not podcast. There's a lot of ways to build authority. I mean, there's YouTube, there's, you know, like you said, there's clubhouse, which is you know, a sister thing to, it's really almost the same thing, but ultimately it's, you know, what is really going to get you what you're looking for. And that's why I think it's really important to know what it is that you're looking for. And, um, you know, while it's, you know, and honestly, I'm just like, honestly, whenever I hear, I, I know we all want to do good. Right. So like for myself, I do podcasting because I think it's really brave for people to start a business and then to step out and do a podcast. It's huge. So to be any kind of part in that, I, I just want to do what I can. And the fact that it can be my business, it's just a dream come true. However, I still have to pay the bills. <laughs> like I, I just have seen that too often podcasters get into this altruistic space where they're not being realistic, that they have to get something out of it themselves. It's just, I don't see it as sustainable. And I, you know, more and more I'm hearing podcasters say, oh, well, that really is it. And they're like, and I've been podcasting for four years. And then I look at all of their profiles. I'm like, dude, you're seriously getting more out of it than you're saying, <laughs> you know, if we're being honest, we have to get something out of it. Otherwise there's a lot of ways to do the same thing. So, um, so I, you know, honestly, the thing about podcasting with other people and you've seen it is it's such a synergy growth model. So you have this person that's on your show that people are looking for, even if they have 10 people looking for them, it's 10 more people, you know, looking for them online. So there's someone searching their name on Google. 
it's 10 more people than you would have had if that person wasn't on your show. So ultimately it's an exponential potential for growth just by having them on your show. The other thing is, is having the two voices I feel is more interesting. I personally, unless it's like Tony Robbins or somebody like, um, Ryan Serhant, like I've got my shows that I love. I could listen to them just talk. Otherwise I can't, it's just, you know, like they're just crazy humans. And so they can get something out of their personalities that are multiple personalities, but for the most part, you have to like, it's just better. And I know I've read studies on that, how two voices will make, and you're in, you're in radio. So you probably heard all this before you could probably quote the data on that, but so it's been I, I a love while it. since I was actually in radio, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is like, you know what I'm saying though, it, it really, there's so many, so much value to having the guests on your show. And we'll talk about a little more, bit more about this later too, just the opportunities that you're, in fact, we'll just talk about it now. Are there, have you been able, like, have you converted guests into like clients or collaborators or anything, um, down that road? Yes. Um, and that I think was when I, when I signed my first client after having them be a guest on the show, I was like, this is a great idea to try and, you know, get them to convert into being a client after this. And so by shifting the format and having these other digital marketing experts come on, I'm kind of cutting my opportunities to have these potential clients come in in half every month. Um, and then, you know, with the world opening up again, it's gotten harder to find more local businesses to come on to the show. So it's, it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, oh, I'm having a harder time. All sorts of, you know, digital marketing experts want to come on my show, but those aren't the ones that are going to pay me to work for them really. So are you having, so you're having trouble getting the local people onto your show? Like they're busy or they're, what are the reasons that you're having trouble getting them on? Um, I think that one of the biggest reasons is just the time. Um, a lot of them, uh, the most recent one, you know, I said, Hey, I'd love to have you come on the show and she would be a great guest. Oh my goodness. But one, she's, she's very, very smart. And she and I've had the opportunity to talk a couple times. Um, and I'm like, I just need you to come on. And so I can get you recorded. And um, she said, no, this last time, because she's going to get ready to move. And, um, that she said, no, the time before, because she didn't have a headshot done for their social media <laughs> graphic. And I was like, please just come on. And, you know, but it's, I mean, not podcasting isn't for everyone. Not everyone feels comfortable speaking and, you know, uh, being put on the spot. And so that's just been one of the hardest things is finding the, these business owners that have the time. Um, even though it's only, you know, a 30 minute podcast, just carving out 30 minutes of their day from doing business for their business <laughs> to come and talk about it. It's kind of asking a lot right now as, as the world starts picking up steam again. Yeah. hundred percent. That's, and that's so good that you've already seen that opportunity. So, so if you were, uh, if you were able to get local businesses just week after week, would you still want to bring in the high, the big name marketers? Or would you feel like, no, I would just fill my whole calendar with locals. I probably would just fill my whole calendar with locals. Um, so I, I do really, I, well, I, I really like their stories. And I mean, one of the best guests that I had, um, his name's Kyle Wells. If you guys want to check that episode out. It was one of my first ones, uh, one of the very first episodes. So, I mean, I don't sound very good, but the conversation was fantastic. And he's a local coffee shop owner here in Denver. And it was right during the shutdown. And he's a local coffee shop. How is oh, he wow. going to be able to still pay his bills and, and, you know, pay his employees? And some of the marketing tips that he shared were just fantastic. And I was like, everyone needs to hear this because what you did, you, you did it the right way. Um, so he talked about joining Facebook groups that where his coffee shop was located, he joined those Facebook groups, those community, those neighborhood Facebook groups. And he joined them and started, you know, contributing to the conversation like, Hey, we're going to try and just open like for two hours a day, what two hours would be the best for you guys to come to the shop. And he immersed himself in those, in those communities. And that way he was able to just open for a couple hours a day, still bring in some money, but he was busy the whole time. He wasn't just like, throwing a dart at a wall and being like, I hope people come. And so I think that was such a, a great strategy of how to use Facebook the right way for free. 
um, that I think that it's, it's like, oh, this is the stuff that people need to hear about. And that, that I mean, like, I'm still getting excited talking about history because it was such a good idea. And awesome. I, I love those, those stories like that, because you never know what simple thing that it's just like, oh yeah, well, I, I had to do something, but that might be like something else that someone else needed to hear and they can go try and do it themselves. Yeah. I love that. Well, and that leads me to, uh, to ask, have you used fa- fa- I know you're not on Facebook very much. It sounds like, but have you used Facebook or other groups of Denver businesses, like Denver business focused groups to get in there and talk about your show or not about your show, but like enter like what he did, like inject yourself into the conversation just so that people know you're there and you know, get to know people. The, the, the light bulb, I don't know if you can see it. It just turned on above my head when you were talking right now. The light yeah. bulb just went on. There yeah. it is, it's on because it was off this whole time, despite me just going off about what a brilliant idea it was for, for him to do that. It's been off for me. I, just <laughs> I love it. it. Something as simple as that. You might have to go on Facebook a little bit then, but, but it's so worth it because those groups really it's a different environment than if you're just on Facebook, you know, you're really in like-minded space. And like what he did, like you said, is brilliant because he used it as a focus group, you know, versus just, um, and it, and it's always about giving more than you take, which you're in social media. So you understand that, but, um, yeah, I think that, that, that's super powerful. Um, and then also now I see that you have a blog have, do you, have you considered like show notes or anything or adding anything like that to your, your blog? I would love to, it's just, um, I've tried a couple different sites, um, but I didn't like the way it read. Um, and then the cost of producing the podcast and paying for Spreaker and then paying for the transcription and then setting aside the time to upload it it just wasn't cost effective for me to do it, even though I know it would make so much sense. And I really should, I would love actually for each of my guests to have their own page on my website with the transcription and their individual episode. I just don't have the time or, or the personnel to, to set that up for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, um, let's see, there's, I kind of have this list of things like, okay, do we have this? Do we have this? It's like my little inventory. So, uh, we've got the groups and the forums. Um, and then on social media, what link do you typically send people to? If you're like, Hey, go listen to our show. So, um, on, when I send it to my, uh, my guest, I give them the links for Apple podcasts, Spotify, and then Spreaker. Um, so they can share whichever one that they want to share. And then for me, I have it just going straight to my next step, social communications.com slash podcast. Awesome. Love it. That makes me very happy. Oh, I, good. I yeah. thought you were going to say, no, no. I mean, ideally you would have a blog page on your own website and then people would go straight to that episode. But, but honestly, like when I'm shorthanding things is what I call it when I'm not doing all of the things, because none of us do all of the things, but I'll, I'll send it to that page. The same as what you're doing the, okay. the podcast page, because then you're in full control of it. You're not paying, you know, I mean, you're putting time and money into it already. You just said it. And then to send it to Spreaker, it hurts my guts. Like I literally feel like, I mean, I don't care if it's Lipson, Spreaker and, you know, anchor, they are doing good. Like they don't need you guys paying for their marketing, <laughs> you know? Um, so, so that just makes me really happy. So, um, awesome. So uh, one more question before we move on to the next section, what have been the most effective ways that you've attracted listeners so far? Social media. Can you clubhouse. Be, tell me more about it? Okay. Clubhouse. How do you, yeah. use, so first of all, for everybody who's listening to the show and you've never heard of clubhouse, I just, uh, in fact, Katie, I watched your YouTube video and two things. So bef- I, I kind of am sidetracked right now, but like two things, number one, I do want to talk about clubhouse and, and what that is and what that means to podcasting. Cause it's huge and a half the, you know, 90% of the world, I think is asleep on this, but, um, so I, I'm so excited that you are in clubhouse. Very rarely do I interview someone who is, so I want to spend a couple minutes talking about that before we transition, but before I do, uh, 
MySpace, what? <laughs> I watched your video and, and he was asking you all about like, oh, MySpace. I heard that that's a thing. And you were talking about how it's really good with entertainers. I mean, are you, when did that happen? Was there some kind of transition? And does, do you think that that, like, th- should we care about that? So, well, I got started back with social media back in the days of MySpace. That's what I was doing for, for bands when I was at the radio station in college. And one of the jobs at the college um, when you were a music director there was you had to get musicians to send you their music for free because we're not going to pay royalties or anything. So we were writing all these letters and everything like that. And then we, I was like, well, this seems like it's going to take forever for me to get in. I think we had to get like 50 pieces or 50 records or singles um, per semester. And I was like, this is going to take forever. So I was like, well, why don't I just go on MySpace? And so I started networking on MySpace. I was like, and I was getting stuff left and right. And I had like a hundred pieces come in within like the first like three weeks. And the station manager was like, Katie, how are you getting all this music sent into the station? And I was like, oh, just using MySpace. And so I can saved all those contacts and I started getting them to come onto the, my show. Cause I had my own show at the radio station, started getting these musicians to come and be a guest on the show. And I would interview them. And from there, I was like, Hey, you know, if you want to go on other radio stations, I, I know other, you know, station managers. And so I started sending out their music anyways, long story short, that's when I got started in social media was using MySpace um, and helping these musicians get off of my space and actually onto the radio airwaves. And I, I get, you know, I never stopped really. I I still, so my space is not dead. That's, that's amazing. (laughs) It's still, it is still around. And, um, you know, it's, it was the first, I mean, okay. And let's be real. Like it was the very first social media platform out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Facebook at the time was just for colleges and universities. And I don't think any of us would have seen the way that social media would affect our, our lives and our businesses um, with, you know, the good old Tom waving, (laughs) you know, as everyone's first MySpace friend. (laughs) Exactly. That's so awesome. So let's talk about clubhouse. So for anyone who hasn't heard of it, it is social audio. So you can go in, you can uh, different people start different rooms uh, and it's, it's just moving and changing. You can plan ahead and have a room or you can do it right on the spot. And what I mean by a room is, you know, you start a topic and you have a title and then you go and you start talking about it and people come and come in and they're listening. They can raise their hand. You can bring them up on stage, meaning that they have access to turning their microphone on, which they don't have without your permission, which is awesome. And so really all these years we've been just eager to be able to bring our audiences into the show with us. And we've tried everything. We've tried your live video and all these different things with the idea of truly having a podcast type format with this interaction, I think is really groundbreaking. Do I, you know, and I've got my own opinions about clubhouse, just like everybody has opinions about every social media, but I'm super fascinated to hear how you've used clubhouse to grow your podcast. Well, it's Clubhouse has completely changed my business. Um, it's it really is like LinkedIn on steroids um, because, and you know this as a podcaster, when you have the opportunity to hear someone speak or to have a conversation with them, it can move the customer journey along at lightning speed. It can go so much faster when you are able to actually hear someone speak because. I mean, I, I know that this is kind of like the pot calling the kettle black, but I mean, in so with social media, if you, if you, someone has a lot of beautiful photos and the right hashtags and the right person writing their captions, it can look like they, like they know what they're talking about, but with clubhouse with, and with podcasting, you have the opportunity to actually hear someone speak to their knowledge. And I think that that's why it's been such a game changer for me because you know, I, up until last October, even though I've been doing social media for 17 years, I never had my own social media accounts because I was always doing it for other people. And when I decided, okay, it's probably about time for me to have my own social media. I still wasn't gaining traction like I was for my clients because I wasn't putting the time and the effort into it. I wasn't using the right hashtags. I was doing everything wrong for myself, but that's a whole nother podcast for another day. (laughs) But when I got on clubhouse and just started 
sharing tips and advice and my thoughts on things, I started gaining all these followers and I started having people reaching out to, to do business and do strategy sessions. And it really 100% transformed my business. And it was, again, the opportunity for me to just speak to my expertise, stuff that I've been doing for 17 years. And by being on Clubhouse, I one, I speak on social media a lot, but two, I talk about podcasting a lot and um, how to get booked on other people's podcasts, how to start your podcast, um, you know, answering questions like this is the mistake that I made, don't do it, you know, so it just being there to have those real time conversations with people is great. Because then the second that the room is over on Clubhouse, that's it. Can't go back, you can't watch it, you can't listen to it again. And so it gives that FOMO, the fear of missing out. So people want to make sure that they follow you or like, oh man, I just heard the last five minutes of what she was saying. She said she had a podcast. I want to go listen to the full thing. And, mm. and that's, what's really helped my, 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 my show is that I will go in and I've been trying to get people who um, if they're also on clubhouse. Hey, you want to just do a 10 minute room and kind of tease what we talked about. And then from there, then they go and listen to the full podcast and oh, they've wow. had that opportunity to kind of hear from both of us in real time. And then the rest That's is amazing. Is... So you guys, so you'll team up with your guest and then say like, Hey, let's go talk about it. And you talk about the same thing that you talked about on the show, but you tease it. H- how, like, how is that received? Do you advertise that? Or you just like show up and then people come into your room? I mean, how do you make that go from like you two and no more into like a room full of people? So, um, So I'm I'm all about strategy and nothing is just done on a whim. Um, So I schedule every single room that I host, even if it's going to go out in five minutes, Um, I schedule every single room because then you get that shareable link and you can share it with the rest of your audience that you have on these other social media platforms. So um, I share it and, you know, we we go in a lot of times I'll do an Instagram live before the clubhouse room, getting ready to go into clubhouse now, come join us. This is what we're going to talk about go into the room, we have a conversation. And then if if anyone has any questions, if you've already listened to the episode, go ahead and raise your hand, come on up. Or if you have any questions about if the last episode was email marketing, if you have any questions about email marketing for Jenny, go ahead and raise your hand. And then from there, I still kind of establish myself as the authority and and ask the guests the questions and um, bring people up and down from the audience. Hey, you know, Tiffany, what's your question for on email marketing for Jenny today? Jenny can answer. And then I follow up with my thoughts to what she just said. So it's really helped me establish myself as an authority and kind of have that live element to my podcast. Mm, I love that. Okay. Well, I, I should probably get back to like what we started to do. I've been talking about clubhouse all day. I know, I know. Well, and I feel like, yeah, I, that's definitely a whole nother episode. Maybe I'll have to have you back and we can just talk about clubhouse, but, or we can do a room on clubhouse. (laughs) Just You can give me all your, (laughs) your pointers, but, um, but I love that. And then have you, are you on fireside or have you heard of fireside? I am on fireside, but I'm still, they still won't let me make my own chats. I can only listen or join. Okay. Well, maybe we should team up and do one because yes, I mean, I love fireside. It's so different too. So fireside, it isn't even, uh, I keep calling it social audio, but it's not really social audio. It's more like a, uh, TV studio audience without Mm -hmm. cameras, (laughs) although, you know, they're coming out with video at some point, but ultimately it's a lot more controlled. So it's, it, it, you know, it's less Twitter and more LinkedIn, you know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. you said, yep. where, yep. cause I feel like clubhouse is a little more Twittery, you know, like it's a lot of like, just a lot. And it's hard to discern, you know, where's safe and where's not safe. And then with fireside, it's a lot more protected. They've got you know a clear vision about where they want it to go and things like that. Uh, so I know, but it, but again, it's, it's such the infant stage that, it's hard to get in. So I've had guests on this show because exactly what you're talking about, about teasing the show, I've thought I I want to bring my guests onto fireside and have this conversation of like, okay, so did you know, here's the list of things you of course have like a 30 day out and here's a list of things to do. Did you do them? And and what happened, you know, kind of, or what, what struggles did you run into? What stopped you from being able to do it? So, um, but, but, you know, it's just, it, 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 we're getting there. We're so close to being able to communicate with our audience. So I love it. So thank you for that whole little, um, 
a side path, but, um, I really <laughs> appreciate your, and, the, and you were saying that that is, so do you, would you say that clubhouse has been the most effective way to attract listeners so far or is there anything else? It's, it's been a great way to attract great guests um, okay. who get about sharing, um, the podcast. Okay. Okay. So how would you say you've grown your audience the best? My audience is pretty stagnant. Honestly, okay. it's, it's, it's right around it's like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you, and, but you do have an audience. So yes. where would, do you have any idea where they came from? Is it just it, it, all the things you're doing, all the things, right. They're bound to come kind of a thing that, yeah, that's, I guess that's where I'm at right now. Whereas I'm like, man, if I, I'm doing all the right things. I just, I just want it. I just want more people to listen to it. <laughs> want more sooner for sure. Okay. Well, awesome. Let me see. I think that is it. So, um, before I transition, is there anything else that you want to add before we move into this next phase where we talk about kind of my take and get your feedback and, uh, get some good next steps for this? I'm, I'm good. Um, I mean, I can tell you the geolocation of the majority of my listeners, but I don't know if it really even makes a difference. Are and, they, in, are what, they where you would think it would be like, are they mostly local? Um, the majority are local. And then, uh, up next is Massachusetts followed by Illinois and yeah, but most of them are all here in Colorado, which is encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Well, and ultimately your audience, um, you know, unless you're a couple things, one is you're going to grow your audience because the topics are interesting and helpful to everybody, no matter where they are. And so that quality content and how you're spreading it, it's going to be attractive to other areas. Uh, ultimately it goes back to what are you trying to get out of your show? So what, you know, like just, if, if we know that more, just about half of adult U S citizens listen to podcasts, then you would imagine that you would want, you know, that's, that's a good grounding point of like what, you know, what numbers look good in the Denver area of listeners, like what kind of market share you have based on that. Mm -hmm. I would, that's what I, but again, you know, and, and this is one thing I haven't even brought up this episode. And I always, always, always say it is like the download data is terrible <laughs> unless you put a lot into having the fancy metric analysis type stuff. So, so even having said that, usually when we're looking at downloads, we're looking at trends. So like you were saying, it's like, here's where the trend line is. It's kind of fallen flat, but how do we get that trend line moving? What kind of things do people respond to? But I would say ultimately market share. I don't know if I would heavily rely on the download data, but, but that is, um, that is interesting. I'm glad that most of the people who are listening are the people that you exactly want. Me too. Yeah. I, I'm glad they're not all in the UK or <laughs> the Philippines or something. <laughs> or Scotland or something. Yeah. I think I was, I think the first place I ever ranked was like Scotland or something like that. And I was like, oh. okay, well, thanks guys, but <laughs> come on us. <laughs> but anyway, well, if it's okay with you, we're going to move into the next phase, which is, I want to talk about uh, number one, things that I see that you're doing really well, which there are a lot of them. Number two, some areas of opportunity. And number three, what is something that you can do and see results in the next 30 days? Is that good? Are you ready? Sounds good. All right. <laughs> awesome. So before I do, I just, I always like to start out talking about the four P's of preeminence. Number one is to know your purpose, which is why we talked about the why at the beginning. Uh, you know, without it, it's, it's just not sustainable. As you know, we need to know why we're doing something. Uh, otherwise it, all the hard stuff just gets in the way. Uh, also the second P is to know your people and really dial in on your audience messaging. And I'm sure that that's something that is your sweet spot, uh, being in the social media realm. Number three is to optimize the promotion of your show. So all that, you know, you've got the website, you've got all these assets. So how do we take that and use it so that you're getting the most out of it? for the least amount of resources, uh, so that you're growing your audience with what you have. And number four is to earn proceeds. Ultimately, if we don't make money at podcasting, all of the things like writing blog posts, promoting it, getting it to stop flatlining, uh, becomes frustrating because we don't have resources to put in because you have a job like podcasting works. And so you're getting busier because 
your podcasting. So, um, so turning that into, uh, something that you're measuring and able to see like, okay, the more that I'm doing this, the more that I'm growing my audience, the more profit that I'm making, the more I can pass some of these tasks on. So, so that all you have to do is show up and do your cool interviews. Uh, does that make sense? Those yes. four things. Okay, perfect. So I really, um, you know, especially listening to your show ahead of time, your sound is awesome. So very nice, uh, very professional. Uh, I have to say too, I watched that video and your background, that backdrop. And, and if you're listening to this, I, I recommend it. It's a great interview. So when you go to Katie show next step, social communications, and you go to the podcast page, you scroll down and there's a YouTube video and it's awesome, but your backdrop is phenomenal. I was super jelly of that. That was awesome. <laughs> um, and then also your website is just so clean. Uh, it's just it doesn't, you know, a lot of times I'll go and there's just so many things and you can just really see that your podcast is an integration into what you do for a living. And I really like that too, because, uh, it's hard when our podcast is so separate from what we're doing. It's like, it's just hard for people to make that leap back over <laughs> into our business. And I think you've integrated it all really, really well. And your pictures are phenomenal. So great job on your, um, your branding. I know that that's a big part of it. So I, I love that on your social media, people can, it's like people can just get to know you cause it's always pictures of you. It's not a boring logo that no one can connect with. Um, so you make it really easy for people to connect with you, uh, as well. So, um, and your, your guests are awesome. So that I listened to a couple episodes and both of them, I felt you, you ask really great questions. I cannot always make it through a whole episode. And I actually listened to a whole episode today. So usually what I'll do is I'm like, I need to hear the beginning. I need to get the gist of it now. Cause I listen to a ton. I, every time I do these, these interviews, I'm listening to all these episodes. And so I'm like, yep. Email marketing. Yep. I know. Okay. So skip, skip, skip. And, um, and so I was really delighted with the, the value of the content and you keep it to 30 minutes. Now I will say, usually I keep mine to 30 minutes, but the hot seats, I never do because it's not like a normal podcast where it's like, uh, you know, I need to keep the listener happy the whole time. I'm like, I made a promise to you before the show. I made two promises. One was that I would be prepared. And two is that I would give you actionable tips at the end. And you know, it just makes for a long show, but I love that you are at 30 minutes. I felt like it just was a really nice length. Any, uh, that, anything it's that I'm just saying, I'm glad that you like the 30 minute length because I, I try to keep it to between 20 and 30 minutes. Cause that's how long I can run on the treadmill. And oh. so like, if I can listen to a full <laughs> episode, then I did it. And it's oh. a very achievable. <laughs> so, that's awesome. But, that's well, such a I, great rule of thumb. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's like you're encouraging exercise and keeping a great length at the same time. Okay. The next part, I'm going to talk about just areas of opportunity. It's not going to be a surprise because we were talking about it throughout the whole thing. I wouldn't say any of them are, well, one of them is ultimately going to be the thing I suggest to do right away if you can, but they're not like, I wouldn't say go do all these things. In fact, I highly recommend not. I, you know, I, think it's great to focus, get one thing accomplished, move to the next thing. Um, but I do want to kind of give you a broad, broad stroke of it because I feel like sometimes I'll get to the end and I'll be like, okay, this is the one thing. And someone's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. It's like, okay, great. Cause I gave you five other things. So what's it to do one of those, you know? Um, so I, I like just to give you, but there's no priority. I wouldn't say any of them are urgent, um, at this point. Okay. So the first thing is the blog. <laughs> The biggest thing about the blog is that it is such a driver for new listeners. Our, our blog site, uh, the, the downloads, the listens that we get, the bulk of them come from people going to our page. So when I post, you know, probably similar to what you're doing where it's like, Hey, I talked to this person or on clubhouse, you know, Hey, you know, this is what we're talking about. This is where our show's about. Here's the link to that episode. They go right to it. There's an embed with just that episode on it. And then they're introduced to your whole show. So then it's like, Oh, so what else is there? Also, I always feel like your website, like every single page is, is like a really important employee and it should have a goal and 
the tools to do it. So just kind of that next step. So if someone wanted to work with you, what would that look like? What would, you know, because as they're listening to you and they're learning to trust you and uh, really, you know, like you were saying on clubhouse where they're like, oh, wow, I can really hear, you know, your stuff. So I would really, you know, because trust is really what people are looking for, especially in marketing, right? Um, Mm -hmm. construction and marketing, (laughs) they're always like, you know, you can find, you know, all these people to help you, but once they connect with you, they're going to want to know what can I do next? And so, as you know, people have very short attention spans. And so as soon as they feel that way and they don't see how to do it easily, they're going to move on to the next thing. So just finding a way to capture it when you've got their interest peaked, um, would be one thing. Um, anything about that before? I know that there are limitations. <laughs> no. And I think that that's one of the things too, where it's just, um, so, I mean, would each pay, would, would you think it'd be best to add all these podcast episodes in as, as blogs? So like on, under my blog account, like, uh, I don't remember, uh, this week's episode, uh, email sent with Jenny Wright would be its own blog, the embedded Spreaker would be on that page and then the entire transcription. There's a lot of ways to do it. There are a lot of ways to do this. And this is one thing I like about it, especially since you're a strategy girl <laughs> and, and I test this all the time. Like, honestly, my show is it's always testing. Um, I, in fact, a lot of times my family complains cause I'm always like, Oh, I've got to do another episode. And because I'm always just like, Oh, but I want to see what's going to happen with these others. And right now I'm testing, uh, let's see. Two months ago, if you'd asked me, I was testing uh, having a place like Contentfly write my blog posts and having a place, uh, uh, having an AI machine called Jarvis write my podcast episodes. And um, I don't, didn't like the experience with the AI. So, so there are a lot, but having said that, my point is, is that there's a lot of ways to do it. You can either have like a full on blog post written, you can have the transcri- transcription. Uh, kind of cleaned up and embedded. The biggest thing, number one is probably they're not going to read it all, but because you have all that content, um, if they go there, they're going to see it. So you want it to be on brand, but all that, that is such good SEO, right? And so you have this, all this rich content that you've created already. Uh, so it's just a matter of how much can you do to develop it? Like how far can you take it? to get it to be that really important employee. Sometimes we're hiring a VA blog posts are the same way. You know, sometimes we're just starting with a transcription because we're like, I just want someone getting on this page because they're going to end up listening to it. They're not going to want to read all this. Oh, okay. Well, you know, lines where you're like, I don't want to read this whole thing. So again, that's one more download because they downloaded it right from there. So it's getting them there from Google and that based on a topic you talked about. So if someone's like, oh, I want to learn more about email marketing, you know, what, you know, what is the best way to write a subject line or something? And then boom, up comes this transcription. And then they're like, oh, it's a podcast and they can either read it or they can listen to it. Uh, And then it's like, okay, you want to know more about it. You can either listen to another episode or you can send me, you know, engage in the next step of working with me. Um, but then if you're like, well, now I want to upgrade, like I'm all about starting simple and then, oh my gosh, I'm getting traction. Let's upgrade it. So just like on a regular website, if all of a sudden an article is getting a lot of traction, I usually will send it to an expensive writer and I'll be like, okay, we need to rewrite this page so that it's legitimately an article about this topic based on my conversation with this person. Or for example, you know, if you have something in your format, like let's say you're revising season two and you're like, well, I'm revamping my format and we're going to have this special feature at the end. Well, maybe your blog post is just about the special feature. Like one thing that we're considering is, you know, writing blog posts on what the outcomes are of the hot seats, you know, things like that. So it's like how, but it's just about getting that episode embedded in something that's got that rich content for the SEO and the call to action so that you're taking them to the next step. Does that make sense? Does it answer your question? No. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. I just, that's just where for me, since I'm not monetizing my podcast at all right now, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that because I have close clients from it, but at the same time, I don't feel like I'm monetizing it yeah. for as much time that goes in. I just, for me looking at it, it's like, gosh, how much more 
should I be spending to, to get the transcriptions for it or to have someone write for it and then have my assistant then upload it to the website. You know, that's all the things where I'm like, Ugh. yeah, well, and, and two, um, after this, after this interview, I'm going to send you my budget calculator. Cause I actually have a spreadsheet where you can plug in, um, you know, how much it would cost depending on the different choices that you make when it comes to that. Um, and it's not even really related to my services anymore. <laughs> it's really just something that I, I give to my clients usually, but it's so helpful. But the biggest thing is, is really looking at the ROI. So if you looked at it, like if you didn't have your podcast and you weren't meeting all these people and you weren't picking them up as clients, you wouldn't have them as clients. So you legitimately are pulling an ROI. So, and then you said the words like, but for all the work, it doesn't feel like I'm getting all this. So I just think it's a math problem as a business owner that I would sit down and do because, um, how, you know, if you like, you're going to have to make a choice at some point, like, do I want to invest something to like, you know, take it to the next level, or do I constantly want to feel like it's an expense that I'm splurging on or something? Does that make sense? Is that helpful? It makes or? perfect sense. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's what I would, um, because for me, my number one monetization, uh, when I started podcasting, my, my second podcast was all about real estate agents and I only interviewed people that I wanted as clients. And so they converted into clients. I also like real estate. So it was really fun to talk about real estate with people who are awesome. Um, but ultimately I want to work with them. That's the kind of person I wanted to work with. And so when I got a client, I knew that was ROI. Cause that's why, like, that was my outcome. And so, but I also, then I didn't have to think about it anymore. Then it was all about the guest. Then it was all about how can I make this experience great? So, so again, it's just, I think a mindset kind of, and I think too, you deserve to sit down and see what you're really getting out of your show as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very valid points. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I was thinking, um, when I was listening to it, the very beginning is such an important spot in your show. So you think about your titles are awesome. And so when people are searching for your show and they're finding it and they're like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing title. And then they look at your description. They're like, whoa, I totally want to listen to it. But then the first thing is just like ads. It's just tough to keep them, especially in a world where there are like over 2 million podcasts now. And so that first 30 to 60 seconds is just so valuable. So even if you were able to bump, you know, just have like a, a caption, you know, like a snippet from the show just to kind of hook them and then do the ad or something like that, just to kind of help optimize. Cause you work so hard to get them there, but just to keep them there so that they're return, you know, without listening to more of the show, it's hard to get them as return listeners. What were you? So, well, and that's what I was going to say too. So with the, the very first um, ad that speaker does, I can't choose the placement of. Okay. Just so would you suggest then just getting rid of ads altogether? Um, can you not have the first ad at all? Can you just no. like, like I okay. personally would, unless you see it, I mean, if, if it's like, do you get more than $10 a month? I, that's what I make. Okay. $10 a month. Okay. So, um, and then I would just look at my, my ROI and I'd be like, if I, hat and two, like the other side of it is like, why do you want more listeners too? Like when I had my real estate show, I was like, I just want to meet everybody on my show. And I only get listeners to make my guests happy. That's the only reason. And so I did a ton of promotion. I made all this great content for them to use if they wanted to, which they didn't. Um, but then yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then some of them did though. So I shouldn't say that, but, um, but ultimately I wanted to meet them. So I kept my promise and gave them all this great stuff, all this great promotion, got it out. And, and my audience did grow because those are all the right things. But, mm -hmm. but ultimately I didn't like, I didn't care. I just wanted to meet them because I knew that these, I was building my business based on meeting the right people. So the other side of it is, is like, um, if that's your approach, I mean, number one, you're going to make a lot more money converting guests into clients than you ever will with, with the ads, you know, ultimately, yeah, that's so true. especially so if you true. have a local, like you have a local market. Um, so that even like, it, there's only like, so, and you, I think your show is just going to still grow 
globally, but, but if you're, if your focus is that it's a local market, um, I just think you're, you're sacrificing so much, uh, show quality cause your show's great. And I would just want to get them right into it. I, I, I would just feel like it's hurting your ability to just make that a shorter line, but that's my own. So, like, <laughs> no, I love that. No. And it's really very appreciated feedback. Um, because it, it's a very simple thing that I can just click a little button and, and turn off the ads with that. Um, and the ads, if I turn them off with starting with something juicier, would you recommend starting with like a clip, like a 30 second clip from the show and then going into the intro instead of just starting with the, the same intro that's, you know, with the music and everything, you know, I, there's, I mean, there's a lot of successful ways to do it. Joe Rogan just starts talking, but you know, he's Joe Rogan. So, yeah. I mean, there's that. However, um, the, so I interview a lot of people too, with a lot of listeners, um, which is impressive because I feel like, wow, you like, wow, you're amazing. Like, why are you here? But ultimately the one thing that I hear that them all say is it needs to be kind of a surprise. So if you, if you have like, always start with a cold open. So always start with a clip, but then if you have your, like for me, if I were you, I would be, have that whole thing where it's like, Hey, this is what I do. If you like what you hear, this is how you get a hold of me. And then boom, go into it. And if you're able to keep all that concise, then they're going to continue because it's happening really quickly. Um, mm -hmm. But if you have like your own regular ad and one thing I haven't started doing yet, um, cause I'm kind of still at the, keep it simple thing. We have the cold open, the, uh, the ad, not the ad, but like the, hi, I'm Tiffany. And this is what we do. And this is, and then, um, and then we go into the music and then the start, but it, it honestly, I've heard it every way from people at a wide variety of stages, but the consistent is the clip at the beginning and capturing, and then keeping anything between the clip and the beginning of your show as short as possible, or even spreading it out so that, you know, you just have your music and then like maybe three minutes in have your, you know, little blurb about what you do, but, you know, just kind of mess around with it. Cause the ultimately, if it, it, like I said, if it's short, people just have a short attention span. Is that helpful? Mm -hmm. No, it's extremely helpful. And my wheels are turning on to different ways that I can try and the different ways I can try and do that. Well, and getting feedback is going to be really helpful. So the, the closer you can get between where you are right now and then being integrated into the community of people who listen to your show, it's going to help you a lot because just like what you're sharing about earlier in that group, um, you know, being able to ask people like the coffee shop did where it's like, Hey, how do you like it better? You know, like I have to yeah. have this. So where would you, you know, say it and, um, and they'll be able to tell you. So I think that would be good. Um, and then too, I just want to be, um, you know, conscientious of our time. So I'm going to kind of just buzz through the rest of this. Um, the other thing, a couple things that stood out to me, uh, one was, you know, getting more of the local businesses onto your show. Uh, one thing now, do you have repeat guests on your show ever? I have not yet. Okay. That's one thing that I heard. I had the host of leap of fate on my show. And that's one thing he has, he actually named that as one of the top ways that he's grown his show is that he's had repeat guests. And I think in a local market, that would be something to consider as well, because then people kind of, Oh, you're back, you know, and maybe have a catch up and you know, what have you seen since then? And I know we talked about this then, and then this is what's happening now. So people can are, again, you're building that community because they're starting yeah. to hear the same voices. Um, and then also, um, you know, I had made a note about going, doing some solo episodes. Again, I personally don't think you need to do them because you build authority by having guests on your show. You know, you're surrounding yourself with brilliant people. So I, I'm not even going to talk more about that. If you can ask me later what my opinion is about that, but I just think if you don't want to do it even, and they don't get the most listens, I don't think you should do it. I think you should do whatever you want. So, um, and then also the final thing was getting people to share your show uh, would you say that like 10% of your guests share the episodes or it's about 10%? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And, and it's honestly, yeah. I mean, it's pretty, especially, I mean, my experience was, is like local business owners are busy and they're usually not on social media. So they're, 
you know, they just get special treatment. And, um, I would just say that's probably a great number <laughs> as far as getting more, you know, you're, you're doing the things, right. So you're giving them the content, you're getting them on clubhouse. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think they're, you know, at the end of the day, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like you're doing all the things. So just keep doing okay. that. And especially <laughs> if they come on multiple times, I think they're going to be more likely to share as well. So, okay. um, so there's that. So before I, I share my one last thing that I think that like, if you did anything, this would be my number one thing. Do you have any questions or feedback about any of the other things that we talked about? Do you think it's good for me to continue bringing in other digital marketing experts or should I single myself out? Um, that is such a good question. Um, number one, I, if they're getting you a lot of listeners, I would do it. I would still do it, but I wouldn't do it more than a quarter of the time. I just would mostly have people, especially if they're potential customers and you're able to get them in personally, I would do whatever it took to get those people in front of me. So I would, you know, grab a couple travel mics or something and just be like, if I come to your place, can I just, it's just an hour and you don't have to prepare. I think, cause you think about it as a business owner and I was on someone's show today already. And I have to say, like, I'm like, I am one of my guests. Like, I can't believe what I'm going through right now. And I usually don't go on other people's shows because of this. Cause I'm just like a wreck. And I'm like, so it's really helped me understand this, but it's one of those, like, they have to trust that you've got it. You know what I mean? Like they have to go, okay, you've got it. And so the more that we as hosts can go, I got you. Like all you have to do is show up. You already have everything that you need. Everything, any conversation I've had, it's like that only, and you're going to look brilliant. Like, you you know, so even though we've had this conversation and it feels like underwhelming, it's not like it's new to other people. And so please just do it. Like, I know you feel because otherwise they're, I mean, your show's only a half an hour anybody has 30, you know, Tony Morton always says like, you could do anything for, well, 30 seconds, but like 30 minutes, isn't that much time. So even the busiest entrepreneur, um, you can talk into. So I just like, I empower you, like just go make them do it because it's awesome. And, but I think the biggest thing is just helping them understand that there's nothing they have to do different than just living for that 30 minutes. And yeah. And they're going to like it. And if they don't, then you'll buy them a fancy dinner. Like that's what I would do. I would 1000% do that. I would be like, if, if I'm wrong, I will X, Y, Z. Like, I don't know, but I would bribe them for sure. But uh, helpful, all that stuff. Cause I have one more thing and then, okay, Perfect. cool. Awesome. So, so if I could, like, if I, if there was one thing that I felt like would leverage what you're already doing, um, well, number one, I would just, I would reformat. I would just get rid of the ads. Honestly, that's the number one thing I would do. Um, the number two thing would be the blog. Um, the cool thing is, is I didn't say anything about the audience promise. I feel like even though we talked a little bit about clarity, I would definitely um, be more conscientious of it, but I think you do it naturally. And so that's not a thing, but ads and then the blog post, um, or transcription or whatever, just getting people to your website. What do you think? I love both of them. Awesome. I love, I love it. I love both of them. Do you have a affordable transcription tool that you recommend? You know what I, this is what I do, honestly. So I use Otter, which is AI, oh, which yeah. is terrible. Cause I'm always at next step nation. So, um, which, you know, next step is awesome, but that's not me. So I use Otter, which is super affordable. And then I actually pay somebody that I really, really trust, which happens to be my daughter. Who's brilliant. And she thinks like I do, uh, but you need to hire some, like, I would suggest hiring somebody that you trust that understands that you're looking for great content. So like somebody who likes podcasts, you know, who can listen to a podcast and that's enjoyable to pull the content. That's how I get my time times of like, uh, she marks down any clip, any 30 second, 60 second, or even, over. you know, she marks whether they're a clip or a segment segments are over a minute. And she just, she's listening to it. She's proofreading the transcript while she's pulling content. So the transcript is in beautiful shape. I have segments marked out that any video develop, you know, any video editor could do. I could, in fact, right now I'm doing it, but she's made it so easy for me. She also pulls quotes. So I've got quotes, segments, 
and a clean transcription all in, I think for any hour that I do, it takes her two hours to do all those things. So then I walk Mm -hmm. away and the guest has like amazing content and I have a transcription that's beautiful that I would put on my website, quite honestly. So it's, it's more expensive than like a VA or something. If, uh, when it comes to writing, um, then I send it to, I still send it to content fly, but that's problematic. I someday will, you know, like when it's really awesome, like if it's like when I interviewed Neil Patel, I had an actual real writer. I mean, I think I wrote that one, but, um, is that helpful? Yeah. It's super helpful. Super okay. helpful. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, and just everybody who's listening, first of all, thank you. I hope I'm, I'm sure there was just like a million nuggets that we just dropped and uh, just, you know, grab one or two and, and use it for your podcast. Be sure to go check out Rocky Mountain Marketing. You can find it on your favorite podcasting platform or go to, um, you can go to next step uh, social communications.com or you can go to spreaker.com slash show slash Rocky dash mountain dash marketing. Katie, thank you again so much. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we wrap? No, this has been awesome. I I really appreciate the time and, you know, I can't wait to join one of your fireside chats. You got to go follow me and hang out with me on clubhouse too. And I'm at Katie Brinkley on clubhouse, but I'd love to join love you it. on Fireside sometime. Oh, I appreciate that so much. Well, you will get an invitation. All my guests get an email afterwards. It's like, hey, do you have an iPhone? Are you on Fireside? And so I would love that. You'll have to drag me into Clubhouse because I feel like I don't know the secret handshake yet. So I would <laughs> love to um, get on there with you too. So I, I appreciate you so much for being here um, very, very much. So I, and again, I highly recommend everybody go check out her podcast. And remember, don't be average, be brave, take action and make magic happen. Thank you so much for listening.